Welcome to Frostfire Summer Theater's performance of Swing Time. It is the second of our four shows in our Just For YouTube virtual entertainment series. We've had a great time putting these together for you, and we hope that you enjoy them. Each new show in the series premieres Saturday night at 6 p.m. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. Well, looky here, we made it. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad. I sure didn't want to miss this show. Oh, me neither. I just love the music from the 40s. <sighs> kind of reminds me of the type of music my mama and daddy used to dance to. Ah. Oh, they loved to dance. When I was just a little turnip, my daddy would sometimes turn on the radio after supper while mama finished up the dishes in the kitchen. And, and we'd pretend we were like those fancy dancers in a ballroom and he'd whisk me up in his arms and he'd gently put me down on my so my feet were on his and we'd dance around like, like Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers. <laughs> and then Mama would come in from the kitchen and she'd quietly tap me on the shoulder and she'd say, excuse me, little missy, can I cut in? <laughs> and I'd usually giggle and I'd plot myself in front of it and watching them dance and until it was time for Daddy to say, well, it looks like time for our little turnip to head to bed. Sandman's waiting. <laughs> it was such a happy time. I did, man, can I cut in? Uh-huh. It's time for the show to start. Uh -oh. Yes, yes. Track 29. Boy, you can give me a shine. A shine, a shine. Well, I can afford. I can afford. For the Chattanooga choo choo. For the Chattanooga choo choo. I got my pair. I have got my pair. I just a trifle to spare. You leave the Pennsylvania station about a quarter to four. Gotta keep her rolling. Woo woo, Chattanooga, there you are. There's gonna be, There's gonna be a certain party at the station. A certain party at the station. Salmon and lays. Salmon and lays. I used to call Bunny Face. Well, he's gonna cry. Gotta keep her rolling. Woo woo, Chattanooga, there you are. There's gonna be, There's gonna be a certain party at the station. A certain party at the station. Sad and late. She'll wear sad and late. I used to call, call funny face. Well, he's gonna cry. She's gonna cry. Until I tell him that I'll never Coach. She was the roughest 
tough as frail But many had a heart as big as a whale Adi, 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 adi He took her down to Chinatown And he showed her how to kick the gong around Adi, 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 adi That she was needed. He gave her a home built of gold and steel, a diamond car with a platinum wheels. Hari 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 hari. Hari 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 hari. Skuli boo skuli boo skuli boo skuli boo. Zit 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 he gave her his townhouse and his racing horses. Each meal she ate was a dozen courses. And a million dollars worth of nickels and dimes. She sat around and counted them all a million times. Hi, 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 hi. Looky here, it says that this next segment has songs from World War II. Oh, my dad was in World War II. He was even in the Battle of the Bulge. Oh, I know all about the Battle of the Bulge. I've been fighting that battle for a long time, and I have yet to lose one single pound. Oh, Donna Jean. <laughs> oh, Darnell, I was just teasing. What'd your daddy do in the war? He was a bugler. A bugler? Well, what kind of a job was that? <gasps> Very important one. He would tell the boys when to get up, when to go to eat, and when to go to bed at night. Well, shoot. I do that to you, and I don't need a bugle to do it. Shh. Some people have a built-in bugle. The other day I chanced to meet a soldier friend of mine. He'd been in camp for several weeks and he was looking fine His muscles had developed and his cheeks were rosy red I asked him how he liked the life And this is what he said Oh, how I hate to get up in the morning Oh, how I long to remain in bed For the hardest blow of all to hear the bugler call You gotta get up, you gotta get up, you gotta get up this morning Someday I'm going to murder the bugler Someday they're going to find him dead I'll amputate his reveille and step upon it heavily and spend the rest of my life in bed Chicago way, he had a boogie. 
Tommy Tyler, no one else could play. He was the top man of his craft. But then his number came up and he was gone with the draft. He's in the army now, a born rebelly. He's a boogie woogie bugle boy to Company B. They made him go with bugle for his Uncle Sam. They really brought him down because he couldn't jam. The captain seemed to understand. Because the next in the cab was now drafted a band. And now the company jumps when he plays rebelly. He's a boogie woogie bugle boy to Company B. A tune, a tune. He blows it ain't till I'm bar He will get rid of them Can't learn a note unless the bass and guitar He's playing with them He makes the company jump When he plays Reveille He's the boogie woogie bugle boy the company B He's some boogie woogie bugle boy the company B And when he plays boogie woogie bugle He's as busy as a bzzz bee And when he plays he makes the company jump into the bar He's the boogie woogie bugle boy of company B Dude, he blows an eight to the bar. He can't blow a note unless the bass and guitar is playing with them. And the company jumps when he plays Reveille. He's the boogie woogie bugle boy of Company B. Boogie every night, he wakes them up the same way in the early ride. They clap their hands and stomp their feet because they know he plays so he gives them a beat. It really breaks them up when he plays Beverly. He's the boogie woogie bugle boy, company B. I do, I do, I do, I do, I do, I do. He blows the day to the bar. The boogie rhythm, you can't play no unless the bass and guitar is playing with them. And the company jumps when he plays Beverly. He's the boogie woogie bugle boy. Weren't those girls just wonderful? Oh, yeah. I thought the Andrews sisters were performing on stage yeah. right in front of us. Me too, me too. <laughs> you know, Darnell, I was thinking, haven't there been a whole lot of wonderful sister singing groups oh, over the years? Oh, yeah. L like the McGuire sisters. The Lennon sisters. The Pointer sisters. The Time sisters. Uh, who? The Time sisters. You remember, they sang at our wedding. <gasps> the Time sisters. Oh, they can harmonize like nobody's oh. business. Oh, when they got to the chorus of Oh, Promise Me, I thought I would faint there and then. It sounded so pretty. <laughs> oh. What were their names again? Oh, let's see now. There was uh, Just In Time, there was Annie Time, and their younger sister, Lot of Time. <sighs> As I recall, Justine was the oldest, and she ran up and got married to some carnival show guy, and they traveling all over the country from show to show. Ain't nobody ever seen her since. Mm. Mm. Oh, and I remember Annie time. She was she dated my cousin Shorty. She had a reputation for hanky panky, <gasps> if you know what I mean. <laughs> they didn't call her any time for nothing. <laughs> Oh, and then there was Lotta. Oh, yeah. She was a little chunky, if I remember right. Some of the mean kids would call her Little Lotta. Little Lotta time. Oh, so sad. Hey, as I recall, didn't they have a baby brother? Uh, kind of a troublemaker. Oh, that's right. After high school, he w went to prison for stealing a car from the bowling alley. Oh. Made all the papers. What was, what was his name again? Dawn time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Speaking of time, time for another number. Oh, good.
dearest, I've been thinking of you day and night, wondering where you might be and what you are doing. The radio is playing If I Could Be With You One Hour Tonight. I guess I shouldn't wish it, but I do. I relive all the happy times we shared. Stay safe, my dear. I'll be waiting here for you. enjoying the Just For YouTube virtual entertainment series. We're Amy Jo and David Pockert, and we created this program. When the decision was made to cancel our summer musical theater, it was very disappointing. But with the health risks of the coronavirus, we knew that it was the right decision. With the cast and crew just a few short weeks from rehearsal, we decided to switch gears and came up with an exciting new plan. If our audiences can't come to Frostfire, we will bring Frostfire to our audiences. And that's how the virtual shows came about. We've created them just for you. It's hard to believe that it's been 30 years since Amy Jo and I first stepped on the Frostfire stage. We came to Frostfire in the summer of 1989 as actors in the production of Annie Get Your Gun. Since that time, we've worn many different hats, including actor, director, musician, stage designer, and you might even seen us in the kitchen busting plates or making a darn good walleye and serving it out to our audience. But the most important part of our experience is that we've had the opportunity to work with so many talented young performers and meet so many wonderful people who have come to Frostfire from summer to summer. Through these relationships, we have made many lifelong friends. Faithful audience members such as Wally and Sue Lang, who return year after year, have made attending a performance at Frostfire Theater part of their summer tradition. Hello, my name is Wally Lang. And I'm Susan Lang, and we're from Laramore, North Dakota. It gives us great pleasure to tell you about something that Sue and I have been participating in for the last many years, probably the last 30 years. It started out as sort of a spur of the moment decision to take in a local event. We attended our first performance at Frostfire and enjoyed it so much that we've basically made it an annual event and we set our schedule so that we make sure that we don't miss the show. Uh, we've enjoyed it so much that there's been years when we've actually gone to the same show twice and in fact one year we went to a matinee and stayed for supper at the lodge and then took in the evening performance of the same show and enjoyed it just as much. It's become a tradition for us, as I said, and we hope that in a post-COVID world that we can go back to seeing the show in person. Dave and I taught at Laramore High School for many years. Some of my fondest memories of being at Frostfire are watching our Laramore students perform. In particular, one play stands out in my mind. Uh, I was called to stage to play a little bit on the piano, a little part of uh, heart and soul in the production of Forever Plaid. It was my 15 seconds of fame and after that starring role I have not returned to the Frostfire stage. However, I have returned to be a member of the audience and enjoy the shows. This year we can't travel to Frostfire but they can travel to us and let's all enjoy the shows virtually. And we hope that next year we can all enjoy the shows in person once again. Frostfire Summer Theater was the vision of Richard and Judith Johnson, owners and operators of Frostfire Lodge and Ski Resort. The first musical theater production was produced in the summer of 1986, 
called New Horizons. It was an original story with music that told of the history of the Rendezvous region. It was Dick and Judith's mission to bring musical theater to the Frostfire and Pemina Gorge region. And we are so pleased and excited that the Pemina Gorge Foundation shares in that mission. This not only gave audience members a chance to experience live musical theater in a beautiful outdoor setting, but it also provided our actors and musicians, such as Spencer Black, a unique performance opportunity. Hello, I'm Spencer Black, and I have had the luxury and privilege of performing with the people at Frostfire for the last 10 years, and I am so blessed to be part of their proud 36-year tradition, because it really is a part of who I am, and I just love it, and I enjoy doing it every summer. And just looking back at all the relationships I've developed through Frostfire, I've been in bands with so many people, I've lived with so many of the people that have been in the cast in the crew, so um, they really have become a second family to me, and I just love them all. Frostfire is something that I really can't imagine my life without. And we have such loyal audience members, I always look for those familiar faces in the crowd every single year. And Amy Jo and David have given me so many opportunities as a musician, playing bass, playing guitar, saxophone, a few other instruments, and they even let me act once in a while. And those opportunities have really been life-changing for me. Um, I always look at Frostfire as a vacation for me. I go up there, we have so much fun getting to meet so many great people in the in the area and if you can just experience just a sliver of the joy that I feel when I go up there and perform um, you're really gonna have a good time so we're gonna see you next week we'll see you next year hopefully in person so enjoy the show turn it up thanks for the love over the past 35 years, Frostfire has grown into something very special, and it would not have happened without you. We want to thank you for believing in us, trusting us, and supporting us. And as we venture into the next 35 years, we hope that your support will continue. Because of the COVID-19 virus, Frostfire Summer Theater, as well as many other theaters, have had to find ways to keep their theater alive and accessible to their audiences. But the reality of the situation is that providing these alternative theater experiences also comes with a price tag. And as nonprofit theaters such as ours have to cancel their summer programming, it makes our efforts all the more difficult. Frostfire and the Pemina Gorge Foundation relies heavily on theater revenue to help them move forward in their daily operations throughout the year. It also provides dollars for theater improvements and production costs for future shows. Our enthusiasm for creating these virtual shows comes out of our gratitude to you, our audience. We want to thank you for supporting us these past 35 years. It is our way of saying thank you. And we hope you will continue to support us for the next 35 years by making a donation to our On With The Show pledge drive. After the show or any time during our campaign, we invite you to become a sponsor or a friend of Frostfire Summer Theater by making your pledge. All donations are tax deductible and will help us to continue bringing you wonderful theater entertainment. You can make your pledge by visiting the link in our description or by going to frostfirepark.org. You can also mail your pledge to the Show Must Go On Pledge Drive, Frostfire Summer Theater, P.O. Box 888, Walhalla, North Dakota, 58282. A pledge of only $35 is like purchasing one ticket to a regular show, or a pledge of $70 would be equivalent of a pair of tickets. You determine the amount that fits your budget. You can make a one-time pledge or a recurring pledge. You can also become a major sponsor with your gift of $500 or more. Thank you for being a part of our viewing audience and helping us celebrate our first 35 years. And now, on, on with, with the, the show. show. like a hammer and I 
I stutter and I stammer Every time I see you at the picture show I guess I'm just another fan of yours So I thought I'd write and let you know Yeah, but I'm sure you got a lot of girls who are writing and telling you the same thing, but I just had to tell you about that one time I saw you and it happened one night. And that was the first time I ever saw you. And I knew right then that you were the nicest fella in the movies. Not like any real actor at all, but just like any fella you'd meet at school or at a party. Then one time I saw you in a picture with Joan Crawford and, and I had to cry a little because you loved her so much and, and you couldn't have her. Well, not to the end of the picture anyway. Then there was that one time you were making a personal appearance and I was standing there and you got out of your car and you almost knocked me over. Oh, but it wasn't your fault. Nah. I was in the way, but you looked at me, and, and you smiled at me, and you smiled at me as if you meant it, and I, and I cried all the way home just because you smiled at me for being in your way. Oh, I'll never forget it, Mr. Gable. Honest Injun, you're my favorite actor. I don't care what happens, let the Gable a dream. <laughs> I just loved him in Gone with the Wind. I don't know how in the world that Scarlett O'Hara could pass him up for that wimp Ashley Wilkes, especially when he was promised to his sweet cousin Melanie. Well, and then Scarlett ups and marries Melanie's younger brother just to make Ashley jealous. What in the world was she thinking? Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. Oh, you Darnell. And his brain is weak He's just plain stupid with a stubborn streak And by the way, if you hate to go to school You may grow up to be a mule Or would you like to swing on a star? Carry moonbeams home in a jar And be better off than you are Or would you rather be a pig? A pig in 
is an animal with dirt on his face. His shoes are a terrible disgrace. He's got no manners when he eats his food. He's fat and lazy and extremely rude. But if you don't care a feather or a fig, you may grow up to be a pig. Or would you like to swing on a star? Carry moonbeams home in a jar. And be better off than you are. Or would you rather be a fish? A fish won't do anything but swim in a brook. He can't write his name or read a book. To fool the people is his only thought. And though he's slippery, he still gets caught. But then if that sort of life is what you wish, you may grow up to be a fish. And all the monkeys are in a zoo. Every day you meet quite a few. It says here that Swinging on a Star was first recorded by Bing Crosby in 1944. Bing Crosby. You know, White Christmas. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Bing, I just don't get it. Why would anybody in their right mind name their baby Bing? Well, I don't know. Bing rhymes with sing. Maybe they knew their son was going to grow up to be a singer. <laughs> I don't think so. I mean, can you imagine? Can you just imagine you invite your friends over for the first time to see the baby and you say to them, I'd like you to meet our new addition to our family, our Baby Bing. <laughs> <laughs> baby Bing sounds like a cherry to me. <laughs> oh, Donna G. Well, it does. <laughs> <laughs> Take me out to the ball game. Take me out to the crowd. Buy me some peanuts, peanuts and cracker jacks. Popcorn cracker jacks. Quiet. Please don't interrupt my act. Well, when you're in a ballpark, they always sell peanuts and popcorn and stuff like that. I know, but not in front of an audience. Pardon me, ladies and gentlemen. What are you doing? I love baseball. Everyone loves baseball. Say, when we get to St. Louis, will you tell me all the names of the players on the team so that when I get to the St. Louis ballpark, I'll be able to say hello to all those fellas? Look, if I do, then you'll go somewhere else and peddle your peanuts and popcorn and not interrupt my act anymore. Sure. All right. I knew the players' names, but you know, nowadays sometimes they give ball players peculiar names. You mean funny names? Yeah, nicknames, pet names. Now let's see. We got who's on first, what's on second, and I don't know who's on third. That's what I want to find out. I said who's on first, what's on second, and I don't know who's on third. You don't know the players' names? Certainly. Well then who's on first? Exactly. I mean the fellow's name. Who? The guy on first. Who? The first baseman. Who? The guy playing first. Who is on first? Now what are you asking me for? I'm telling you who is on first. No, I'm asking you who's on first. That's the man's name. That's whose name? Yes. Go ahead and tell me. Who? The guy on first. Who? Look, you got a first baseman, don't you? Yes. Well then, who's playing first? Absolutely. When you pay off the first baseman each month, who gets the money? Every dollar. Why not? The man's entitled to it. Who is? Yeah, sometimes his wife picks it up instead. Whose wife? Exactly. Look, all I want to know is what's the guy's name on first? Uh, no, don't switch him around. What's on second? I'm not asking you who's on second. No, who is on first? I don't know. He's on third. We're not talking about now him. Now how'd I get to third base? You mentioned his name. If I mentioned the third baseman's name, who did I say is playing in third? No. Who is on first? Oh, never mind first. I want to know what's the guy's name on third. No, what's on second? I'm not asking you who's on second. No, who is on first? I don't know. He's on third. We're not talking oh, about him. Would you please stay on third base and don't get off of it? What was it you wanted? Now, 
Who's playing third base? Now, why do you insist on putting who on third base? Why? Who am I putting over there? Yes, but we don't want him over there. What's the guy's name on third? No, what belongs on second? I'm not asking you who's on second. No, who is on first? I don't know. Third, third base. base. You got an outfield? Oh, yeah. The left fielder's name. Why? I don't know. I just thought I'd ask you. I just thought I'd tell you. Well, then tell me who's playing left field. No, who is on first? Well, stay out of the infield. I want to know what's the left fielder's no, name. No, what's on second? I'm not asking you who's on second. No, who is on first? I don't know. Third, Third base. base. <laughs> the left fielder's name. Why? Because. Oh, he's center field. <sighs> you got a pitcher? Now wouldn't this be a fine team without a pitcher? The pitcher's name. Tomorrow. You don't want to tell me today? I'm telling you now. Then go ahead. Tomorrow. What time? What time what? What time are you going to tell me who's pitching? No, who is not pitching? Who well, is on first? If you say who's on first, I want to know what's the pitcher's name. No, what's on second? I'm not asking you who's on second. No, who is on first? I don't know. Third, third base. base. Now, suppose that I'm catching and tomorrow's pitching on my team and their heavy hitter gets up. Okay. Uh, tomorrow throws the ball and the batter bunts the ball. Me being a good catcher, I want to throw the guy out on first base. So, I pick up the ball and I throw it to who? Now, that's the first thing you've gotten right. I don't even know what I'm talking about. That's the idea. So, throw the ball to first base. Naturally. Now, who's got it? Naturally. If I throw the ball to first, somebody's got to catch it. Now, who caught it? Naturally. Who caught it? Naturally. Who? Naturally. Naturally. Yes. So, I pick up the ball and I throw it to naturally. No, no, you pick up the ball and you throw it to who? Naturally. Yes. So, I pick up the ball and I throw it to naturally. No, no, you don't. I pick up the ball and I throw it to who? Naturally. That's what I'm saying. Well, you're not saying it that way. I said I throw the ball to naturally. No, you throw the ball to who? Naturally. There we go. That's what I'm saying. I throw the ball to who? Naturally. Ask me. You throw the ball to who? Naturally. There we go. Uh, same as you. I throw the ball to who? Naturally. Now who has it? Naturally. Oh, he better have it. I pick up the ball and I throw it to first. Whoever it is grabs the ball so the guy runs to second. The first baseman throws it to what? What throws it to? I don't know who throws it. Back to tomorrow. Triple play. Yes. Their next batter gets up. It's a long fly ball to because. Why? I don't know. He's on third and I don't give a darn. What did you just say? I said, I don't give a darn. <laughs> That's our shortstop. What's the matter, coach? Why are you so down in the dumps? I just got into a frustrating argument with my friend Jerry. I just can't seem to get through to him. Uh, he'll come around. Never give up on a friend. You've got to have heart. All you really need is heart. When the odds are saying you'll never win, that's when the grin should start. You've got to have hope. Us to sit around and bowl. Nothing's half as bad as it may appear. Wait till next year and hope. Is batting zero. Get your chin up off the floor. Mister, you could be a hero. You can open any door. There's nothing to it but to do it. You gotta have hope. of crying why should we curse gotta get better cause we can't get worse and to add to it when your luck is batting zero sing it like you mean it get your chin up off the floor mister you could be a hero 
nothing to it but to do it. You've got to have heart. Muscle, 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 heart. Always trying to be a genius, of course. But keep that old horse before the cart. So what the heck's the use of crying? Why should we curse? just love baseball. Nothing finer than watching the boys of summer pour their hearts out on the field. Did you know I could have had a career in baseball? No. Yeah. You come on. Yeah. The, the manager of the Kentucky Chicken Buckets wanted to sign me to a 15-year contract to be part of the team. 15 years? Yeah. Well, how come I never heard about this before? Well, you know how I hate to brag and all. Oh, yeah, really? Well, now, where do they want to put you? First base? Uh, no. Center field. Uh uh. Pitcher? Nope. Well, where was it then? Chief operations manager with the possibility of advancing to the head of the quality <laughs> control department. Chief, Chief operations manager? Yeah. Head of quality control? Mm -hmm. <laughs> what was it? Cleaning the chewing gum off the seats in the dugout? Or, or I know, washing and wiping down the bats? Or, or brushing off the bases in the pitcher's mouth before each inning? Important stuff like that? Well, it was important. <laughs> sure, I'll bet. <laughs> Shh. Oh, here comes another number. <laughs> Spent each time I could afford Like a child in wild anticipation Long to hear them all aboard Seven, that's the time we leave at seven I'll be waiting up for heaven Counting every mile of railroad track listen to music like this. Folks like Tommy Dorsey and, and Glenn Miller and Guy Lumbago. <laughs> Guy who? Guy Lumbago. You know Guy Lumbago and the Royal Canadians. <laughs> well, don't quote me, but I think it's Guy Lombardo and not Guy Lumbago. <laughs> well, anyway. 
they used to love to listen to Guy Lombardo every New Year's Eve on our 24-inch Philco television set. Oh, they weren't much for going out, especially on New Year's Eve. So they would sit in the living room and, and listen, and they'd listen a little and dance a little, just like those fancy schmancy folks in their tuxedos and ball gowns. And Mama would usually bring home a couple of crazy hats from the dime store and a noisemaker or two. And then about 9 o'clock, Daddy would break open a new bottle of Mogan David. <laughs> and those fancy glasses, you know, the ones meant for company. And they'd sip their wine real civilized like, like the rich folks. <laughs> Oh, they always meant to stay up and toast in the new year, but every year the same old thing happened, just like the year before. About 10.30, you'd see them both schlepped over in their chairs, Daddy in his overstuffed recliner and Mama in her rocker, and they'd be sawing logs like a camp full of lumberjacks. It was quite a sight. Oh, gosh. Darnell, aren't you glad that Darnell... What, 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 what? Darnell, the show's over. Already? Well, yes, but we can see it again next week. Oh, that's There's right. There's another one. It says it right in here. Uh -huh. It says the fabulous 50s. If It says if you go to frostfirepark.org, you can watch the show for free. Oh, and look at this. It says if you're feeling generous, Frostfire would appreciate your donation to the show must go on pledge drive. Bring the checkbook. Yep. All right. Okay. Well, it looks like this train is heading off without us, so pick up your caboose and let's head on out. <laughs> All right. Oh, gonna take the sentimental journey. journey.